math operations with positive and negative numbers, meaning how do we add, subtract, multiply, and divide with both positive and negative numbers. Again, this should be reviewed, so if you feel like you can skip this video, that is perfectly understandable. So the first thing is how do we reference the number line with this? And it's as simple as if we are trying to add numbers, then we move to the right on the number line. And if we subtract numbers, that means we move to the left on the number line. For example, here, if I start with negative 2 and I want to add 5, that means I move to the right 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I end up with this number here. So that means negative 2 plus 5 gives me 3. The second example is if I start with 10 and I want to subtract 3 units, I move to the left 3 units and that gives me this number here and that means I end up with my final answer of 7. Now these two examples here were extremely easy ones, so let's see if we can see more difficult ones. So now I'm going to go over the philosophy of how to add all types of numbers, positives and negatives. And then we'll move on to the other operations, like subtraction, multiplication, and division. So if you're trying to add two numbers with the same sign, meaning both positive numbers and both negative numbers, you just ignore the signs temporarily, you add the two numbers, and then you attach the sign that you had from the beginning. So um, for example here, 15 plus 27. They're both positive, so you just combine the numbers. 15 plus 7 gives me 42. They're both positive, so my final answer is positive. And of course, we don't denote positive in any sort of way. My next example, negative 65 plus a negative 48. They're both negative, so we just combine them. So 65 plus 48 gives me 113. So my answer is 113. But both of my numbers are negative, so my final answer is negative 113. So if they're both positive, it ends up positive. If they're both negative, it ends up negative when we are adding them. Now, when they're opposite signs, it actually depends upon which one is larger. So we're going to take the larger number minus the smaller number, and then we're going to attach the sign that goes with the larger number. And you can see I have two examples here. 2 plus a negative 5. I look at my larger number, which is 5, and I subtract them. So 5 minus 2 gives me 3. But if I look, my larger number is negative, so my final answer here will be a negative 3. My second example here, 53 plus a negative 27. Opposite sign, so I take my larger one, is 53, and I subtract my smaller one, which is 27, and that gives me a difference of 26. My larger number is positive, so my final answer here is positive. So to recap, if they're the same sign, just add the numbers, attach the sign. If they're opposite signs, take the larger minus the smaller, and your final answer has the sign of the larger number. Now moving on to subtraction. Basically the trick with subtraction is you can always convert it to addition if you feel the need to do so. So subtraction can always be changed to a plus negative. For example, 5 minus 3 can be changed to 5 plus a negative 3. Or you can do it the opposite way. If you had the problem of 5 plus a negative 3, you could change it to 5 minus 3, whichever is the most comfortable for you. Now, sometimes I think of this in this fashion, and sometimes I think of it in this fashion. It really just depends upon what type of problem we're looking at. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work these examples here. Okay, example one, I'm going to convert it into the addition so I can reference my addition rules. But if you can work it without changing it that way, then that's perfectly fine. So I have negative 31 plus a negative 18. So it's addition. I look at my numbers. They're the same sign. So I just combine the two numbers. 31 plus 18 gives me 49. They are both negative. So my final answer is a negative 49. 
Now my second example here has minus a negative, and that's a double negative. It works just like we were talking in the English language. If you said two negatives together, it would cancel out and make it a positive. Same thing in the math world. Two negatives cancel each other out and make it positive. So this is the exact same thing as 49 plus 22. They're both positive numbers, so we just add them together. That gives me 71, and my final answer is a positive 71. My third example, again, I have double negatives, so the first thing I'm going to do is cancel out those double negatives, which gives me a negative 3 plus 16. They're opposite signs, so I subtract them. 16 minus 3 gives me 13. My larger number is positive, so my final answer is positive 13. My last example is nothing that we see out of the ordinary, 73 minus 61. We just take the larger number minus the smaller number. The difference is 12. My larger number was positive. My smaller number is negative, so my final answer again here is positive 12. So that's how we add and subtract positive and negative numbers. Next operation that we need to look at is multiplication. Multiplication and division actually have the exact same rule, so I'm going to combine these two together. The thing that we need to know is the word product is the same thing as multiply, and the word quotient is the same thing as divide. So product is multiplication, quotient goes with division. So if you ever multiply two numbers with the same signs, then your answer is going to be positive. If you ever divide two numbers with the same sign, the answer is going to be positive. If you ever multiply or divide two numbers with opposite signs, then it's guaranteed that your answer is going to be negative. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work out the examples that I have here. All right. So positive times positive or positive divided by positive is guaranteed to give you a positive answer. So 3 times 15 gives me 45. They're both positive numbers, so my answer is guaranteed to be a positive number. Negative times negative or negative divided by negative is also going to give you a positive number. This goes back to the double negative rule. Two negatives cancel each other out and make it a positive. So negative times negative here gives me a positive answer. 4 times 9 gives me a positive 36. Negative divided by negative gives me a positive answer. And 21 divided by 7 gives me 3. So double negatives cancel out, and your answers will always be positive. doesn't matter whether you're multiplying them or dividing them. Now, if you're multiplying and dividing and your signs are opposite, so one's positive and one's negative, doesn't matter in any order, then your answer is always going to be negative. So a positive 84 times a negative 4 is going to guarantee to give you a negative, and 84 times 4 gives you 336. So the answer here is negative 336. Negative 54 divided by positive 9. Negative divided by positive gives you negative, And 54 divided by 9 gives you 6. So the answer to this one is negative 6. Now you can see here, not only did we work the positives and the negatives of these problems, but you can see the different ways that we can write multiplication and division. So multiplication can be written as a dot in the middle, with one set of parentheses or with two sets of parentheses. Division can be written as a division bar, which we probably won't see too often from here on out, or it can be written as the fraction bar as we see here. Now, to recap all of the rules, with addition and subtraction, positive plus positive gives you positive, negative plus negative gives you negative, and positive plus negative, it depends on which one is larger. Multiplication and division. Positive times positive gives you positive. Negative times negative gives you positive. And positive times negative gives you negative. Subtraction follows the rules of addition, and division follows the rules of multiplication. 
So you can see in five out of six of these cases, you absolutely know whether your answer is going to be positive or negative. The only time it depends is when you're adding or subtracting two opposite signs. So I have some examples here that kind of puts all of this together. So I suggest that you pause the video here and see if you can work these examples on your own. Okay, example one is a pure division problem. So if you just look at the number, 63 divided by nine comes out evenly and it gives you the answer of seven. That's not the difficult part of this problem. The difficult part is trying to figure out whether the answer is positive or negative. Well, with fractions, it doesn't matter whether negative is out in front, in the numerator, or with the denominator. It just goes back to if there's a double negative, it cancels out. So I can cancel out any two of these negatives. So I'm just going to cancel out this negative here with this negative here. Now I could have picked any of two and it would work out the same. Notice I have one negative left over, so my answer to this problem is a negative 7. Example 2. I have a positive number divided by a negative number. Positive divided by negative is guaranteed to give you a negative number. Now, probably the more difficult part of this problem is how do we divide fractions. Going back to the division rules, it's easy as pi, flip, and multiply. So I take the reciprocal of my second fraction and I change it to a multiplication problem. Remember, with multiplication, you should always reduce first. So 5 divided by 5 cancels each other out, leaves you with 1s in those places. And 3 goes into both 6 and 21. It goes into 6 twice, and it goes into 21 7 times. So multiplying straight across, I have 1 times 7 gives me 7, and I have 2 times 1 gives me 2. And don't forget that we already said your final answer is negative. It doesn't matter whether your negative is in the middle or on the top or on the bottom. I always have the tendency to put it in the numerator, but whatever you put it is perfectly fine. So the answer to this problem is negative 7 halves. Example 3 is ultimately a subtraction problem, but notice I have two negatives here. So I can cancel these out, cancel out my double negatives. That makes it into an addition problem. Well, either way here, I'm trying to add fractions, and so I need an LCD. And so if I break down my 22, that gives me a factor of 11 times 2. So I need to multiply my so I need to multiply my left fraction here by the missing piece, which is 2 over 2. Multiply straight across. 3 times 2 gives me 6. 11 times 2 gives me 22. Don't forget your negative, and that is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see um, throughout the whole semester is just forgetting to copy negatives from one problem to the next. I cancel out these two negatives, which makes it positive, and then 21 over 22. Now, this is why I have the tendency to write the negatives instead of the middle. I put it on top because in this fraction, it's going to make it easier on us. Since I have common denominators, I need to do what the numerators say. They're opposite signs, so I subtract them. The bigger one, 21, minus the smaller one of 6 is 15. My bigger number is positive, so my answer is positive. And my least common denominator is 22. See if I can reduce, which I cannot. So my final answer is 15 over 22. Example four is probably a little easier because I have whole numbers, but I see lots of negatives flying about here. Well, it all goes back to double negatives. These two negatives cancel themselves out, and these two negatives cancel themselves out. So rewriting this problem, this gives me a positive 13 plus a positive 18. Both positive numbers, so just combine them. 13 plus 18 gives me a positive 31, which gives me my final answer there. So I've worked through all these examples, which finishes off how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide all types of positive and negative numbers. And let me go back to this here, which basically recaps all the rules that we utilized in this video.